Today I'm going to use my 31 pound mold from Winnie and Walt and I'd like to let you know if you're a soap maker if it's worth it um, and like what my experience is. I mean after shipping and handling because I'm in the United States and Winnie and Walt is in Canada it's about 400 bucks for this mold and which is pretty pricey so I put it off for a long time knowing that she was the best uh, the best mold maker out there but it's it's a big expense so I would have liked to have known from someone that got it before me if it was worth the purchase. So I'm just gonna give you my honest result here. I'm making a giant batch of master batch and lye here. That's the oil behind me, the olive oil, the coconut oil, the castor seed oil. And now I'm making um, the lye mixture right now, which I do about 50% or more ice. There's the lye going in now. I'm measuring it on the scale on the ground. Um, and this will be enough for like three, 400 bars of soap, but I'm gonna use a part of this for the mold right now. I'm gonna be making the world tree, which is a pine fragrance. Or what you're saying there. Uh, how is that bird? I always wanted a Quaker. Oh God, they're a handful. They're so much fun. He's hilarious, but also annoying. Yeah, he's both in equal parts. And you, we, we haven't left the house since we got him, you know, basically. That's it's, kind of how it rolls with them. Like you can't really leave anymore. You're like trapped. Unless you can get somebody to babysit, you know, that's... Okay, Tabber says Sully is the best burb. He is the best <laughs> burb. He is the best. As Quakers go, he is the best Quaker ever. I think Fishy is the best burb, and he's the Indian ringneck. You think he's the other you, one. Oh, you always like the Indian ringnecks. You just like Indian ringnecks. Okay, so... So as I'm blending the oils here, I want to point out that I'm using a very large stick blender. Uh, the first batch that I tried with this giant 31 pound mold, I screwed it up royally because I used too weak of a blender. And so what happened was the lye water didn't emulsify properly with the fats and it ruined a lot of the batch. And that was my own fault by not using a more powerful stick blender. So just be prepared for that, that you might need a larger stick blender. So this is a fast Put it all in one pot. I don't know if I mentioned that already. Anyway, I was going to say, this is the 31 pound mold that I'm using, but they, and that's the largest that they sell, but they do have other sizes like a 24 pound, an 11 pound. I think they have a 10 pound. They also have like the long skinnies tall and the regular standards. So there's all sorts of options. I just picked the biggest one because I make a ton of soap. We sold 25,000 bars last year and I made every single one of those bars myself. So I have to up the production significantly here. So um, if you do get the big mold, be prepared. You're gonna need a way to split down the logs. Uh, that's 400 plus for a custom splitter. And you, are, you will also need a mixer like what I had, and they're not cheap either. They're like 250 to 350. I'm scrapey scraping. For huge batches like this, I often find it's easier to do it in the pot swirl. I'm using a five gallon bucket here, as you can see. I'm just reusing a coconut bucket. Uh, and I'm hoping, because this is such a fast seizing fragrance, this is like a cypress, bayberry, Fraser fir sort of blend. This is the world tree. It's extremely popular. It's our second best seller here at Birds of Valhalla. Um, but I know it's going to start to seize as I pour it. So I'm just trying to eliminate the problem with layering or swirling, which I know is just too much for this fragrance. Pretty soon I'm going to get so swole. Oh, it kind of looks, I don't know if I love it. Hopefully it has oh, it'll be good. pretty swirls. I don't know if you see how good the quality of that blue silicon is, but it's like half an inch thick. It weighs like eight pounds just by itself. And those sides are removable. And you see those handy little slots there on the side of the mold? Every three is about how wide I'm gonna make my slices. And it's gonna give me a good gauge of like where to decorate or if I had to place stones or toppings or whatnot. It's very handy. Yeah, we'll get there. I am scrapey scraping. Tabbers knows what's up. All right, excuse me. I'm gonna take this away, Sam. No. This is hard work. Fairy farts. We have a call for fairy farts. Oh boy. 
I love fairy farts. Okay. Sully, could you you could you stop? We have a bird up here. He's being this a pain is, in the ass. This is the answer to how the Quaker is. Yeah. He's just up here. He went from biting Gene to destroying everything. Pretty quick. Hi, Sully. <laughs> is he what cute? did you say, tickle? <laughs> And then you look at him and you're like, holy shit, he's so freaking cute. He's such a little stinker. Did you stinker. say tickle? Such a little stinker. Sally, what are you doing? Say hello. Okay. Tickle, tickle, tickle. Sally. Okay. Don't have a lot of time, so I'm going fast. So I'm going to actually put sparkles on this batch, but that was like a slip of the mind. I never do that with the soap. I usually make it with no sparkles really, or no glitter. And I put um, a tree silicon, like a tree bark silicon pattern mold thing on top that makes it the top look like tree bark. But I totally forgot. I was in just such a hurry, so excited to get this in the mold and I was, just hoping not to screw this up that I sort of forgot that that was my process for this soap even though that's how I've made it for two years so this one is going to have sparkles and it's going to be different so usually they have tree bark but somebody requested fairy farts so I have to listen it blows my mind even today like what I can't believe somebody wants to watch I tell you it's a challenge to make this much soap on a live here's the fairy farts yep these are nice green ones I break this out for the Christmas soaps that we're gonna do. It, it's She's, not Angel in the background, it's Fishy. It's Fishy, who sounds just like Angel. Angel's coming to visit in July. We can't wait. Hopefully there'll be no eggs involved between her and Fish, but we'll see. Secretly, she really wants there to be eggs involved. No, oh my God. Okay, maybe, but. All right. There we go. So this is how we're gonna cut this giant, giant loaf. We're gonna set this up. This is at the appropriate height. We're gonna put a piece of paper to slide and we've put two boards to even out. I don't have the multi-cutter yet, so this is how I have to do this. So it may seem a little complicated the way I have to set this up to cut it down. However, it actually went really easily. Uh, I tried to do it without the boards last time and it was an absolute disaster. I do not recommend it. So you need to put like parchment or wax paper or even just regular paper right underneath and it just helps it slide without smearing and um, sticking because you know soap can be kind of sticky and moist when it's still like not cured. This was uh, two days old when I cut it which I find to be standard with this mold with my recipe. You know, everybody's recipe is gonna be different. Some people have to keep things in the mold for a little bit longer. My recipe is a more hard recipe. So, and that's why it, my soap is known to like last a pretty long time. It's one of the reasons. So I found that I got five really good sized loaves out of this. Like what you would think would be like seven and a half pound sort of size wise. I don't know if that's exactly the weight. Maybe I should have measured that here. Maybe next time I'll do that. And I got a gorgeous swirl. I was a little worried when I poured it, it looked muddy to me. So I'm pleasantly surprised at the results. And with the board on either side here, it, it was perfect. There was no struggle. Once, you know, I had to pick it up and it was heavy the first time. But then after the first initial pickup, it wasn't heavy to push it through. It was no problem at all. Just make sure all of your stuff is completely dry. Of course, you don't want any like droplets of water that will definitely screw things up. And they really did come out quite pretty. They're definitely more of the tall and skinny style. So next time, instead of like 31, 30 pounds, I'm gonna try to shoot for like 28 pounds. And what that's gonna do is make it a little bit shorter in the mold so that the soap is a little more square. And if that's not short enough, then maybe I'll go to 26 pounds and see how that goes. What's nice about this mold is that you can go either way. You can go tall and skinny, or you can go more of a standard size. It's making it pretty versatile, which some of her molds are that way, not just this one, that you can just, depending on how much you pour, get a tall and skinny or get a standard. 
So it's one of the reasons why I actually got this particular mold was because of that option. Because sometimes I do like to do tall and skinny and like strawberry tops and, you know, high tops and things like that. So I like to have that flexibility in my own work. So to cut the last piece, I just used my soap cutter, my multi cutter here. I definitely need to get a longer one. <laughs> I didn't line it up right the first the first log. I'm pretty happy with the swirls. This is our standard line and these are generous size. These are this is definitely bigger than they usually are when I make them with my cuz I usually use, use those like cheap molds, those 3 pound molds with the purple liners. I have probably about 40 of those and I use them all the time. And my trick with those is to duct tape them when you first get them. Take a piece of duct tape, go all the way around the wooden part of that mold and they can take a pretty good beating if you do that with them. Um, and I would say the quality of this mold is like, it's just a whole nother experience. I feel like a grown up soap maker now that I have a Winston and Walter mold. Everybody else seems to have them. Even much smaller soap makers seems to have one of these molds. And I've always wanted one. So I'm so glad that I finally got one. And I love the way these came out. What do you think? You know what's interesting too is the swirl looks different in the big mold as opposed to the small one. Because there's no center and there's no edge. So you, you get like a, a much different look. Which I find absolutely fascinating. I didn't think the swirls would look significantly different or the soap would look elevated because of it, but it, it absolutely does elevate the swirl. Uh, the kind of goal I have is to count how many bars I get out of this mold and let you guys know. So what I did learn was my triple batch, uh, I tripled my triple batch. So it would have been, oh, let's see, about 30 pounds of soap. It's a 31 pound soap mold. These are definitely like, the tall and skinny size at that weight, if I had made it 28 pounds, I think they would have been shorter. It's concerning because I have to fit them in boxes, but if I let them cure a little bit, they should shrink enough to fit in the standard box. Now let's count how many soaps how many we've got out of this. Out of the one. 75 soaps plus a bunch of odds and ends, which we can use on our variety packs and whatnot. Sue. So, we don't usually do that, but these are such nice pieces, I just might. So honest first impressions, I thought it would be 80 or 90 bars. It was 75, but it's because of the way I cut them. And I'm absolutely floored by the quality and the thickness of the silicon. It was worth every penny and then some. I'm going to be buying more as soon as possible. Okay, as we near the end of this video, I'm going to put the link to Winston and Walter in the description of the video. If this was helpful, please like and follow. I have so much more content coming from fragrance to lighting to the way I set up my six-figure, multi-six-figure soap studio. This is my collection for the World Tree. Thank you for watching. This is Deborah Glaze of Birds of Valhalla.